Evening, folks. Hope you're all well. You're all very welcome. All very welcome. And um, my name is Finn Barshihi, and beside me is Anne Ryan. And you want to say hello? Hi, everybody. Good. Yes. Hi, everybody. Good. Before Thanks we start, us. maybe we can just make sure the audio is all right. If you can hear us okay, you might just type in yes into the question box, if that's okay. Evening. Perfect. Hi, Amy. Hi, Claire. Good, good. Thanks, folks. Good. All right. Well, hopefully we'll enjoy the next hour, hour and a half or so. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, the courses that we have on offer. What we're going to do this evening is we're going to give you a bit of background in terms of Inafarma, um, just briefly explain who Inafarma is. Um, we're going to talk about Springboard. Some of you may be very familiar. Some of you may not be as familiar. And we'll talk about a thing called a human capital initiative as well. Uh, we'll spend a bit of time talking about the process. Sometimes the process can be confusing for people, and we want to be sure that people clearly understand it. Then Anne will talk a little bit about the industry, pharmaceutical industry, the medical device industry, the food industry. And we'll talk a little bit about the framework as well. These may be things that you may or may not have heard of before. And I suppose based on our own experiences, sometimes what we find is people get a bit confused between different levels and different credits and things like that. So we want to spend a little bit of time doing that. And then what we do, um, we we'll give you a bit of an overview of all of the courses that we have on offer, when we're going to run them, um, all of that kind of stuff. And then we'll talk about next steps, which is really, really important. Um, there's a question box. A lot of you, I think, have found it. Um, if you have any questions, by all means, type them in there. There's a group of people um, online as well from Inner Pharma that will deal with your questions. So the questions that you actually type in, they won't be visible to the rest of the audience. They'll be visible primarily to uh, the people who are kind of behind the scenes here. So what we'll do is some questions, if they're generic, we'll, we'll answer them during certain points in time. Or if there's questions that are specific to yourselves, then as well, we'll have people who will, who will re reply directly to you as well. So that's kind of the, the process as we go through the evening. Um, if you have questions, by all means, type them in. And, and we'll try and get through as many as we can. And then we'll give you details as well if you want to follow up later on as well. Okay, so that's the, the process. And Anne will jump in then as well now in, in a few seconds as well. So let's start off, I suppose, and just give you a very quick overview of Inafarma. Uh, obviously, you've probably heard of us because you're here. Um, Inafarma, Education, uh, R&D Institute, Irish organization set up around 2008. And we primarily focus on providing education for people in pharma, in med tech and food. Like I said, we set up in 2008 and we've been developing courses primarily to help people to get into those industries or to upskill within those industries as well. And really what we'd like to do is, you know, we think we have a fairly good idea in terms of new technology that's coming down the line. So we want to be able to give you current skills and we want to be able to give you future skills as well. If you kind of summarize, I suppose, what we try and do, we work across a few different areas. Um, ultimately, what you get is a recognized qualification, QQI qualification. We've had over 8,000 students successfully graduate in the last 10 years. A large part of what we do is around coaching and mentoring and making sure that people are very employable. And, and you saw there in the video with Anne, prior to us starting, a lot of people found that hugely beneficial. Very, very large number number of people are in roles very soon after their their uh, courses if they were unemployed. And one of the things we do as well is we, we're trying to develop people's network, and network is really important these days to help people get into roles. We offer courses from level six, which is certificate right up to master's level. And we have a lot of regional focus as well. That's really important to us to help people to find roles regionally. In a lot of cases, you'll see a lot of our programs are delivered regionally as well. And you'll see a lot of our programs are a combination of scientific, pharmaceutical type of programs and business and, and career focused programs as well. In terms of who we work with, we have a few academic partners. Uh, we work with um, Griffith College and we work at TUD uh, in Tala. Um, so all of the programs we design, uh, they're accredited to those institutes. So when you graduate, you will graduate either through Griffith College or you will graduate through TUD Dublin. Obviously, from um, a, a funding perspective, we partner quite a lot with Springboard and the new initiative, which is part of Springboard Plus, called the Human Capital Initiative, which we'll talk about as well. 
Uh, so they would be the, the key partners that we'll be talking about this evening. So just to give you a bit of background, some of you may be familiar, some of you may not be familiar with Springboard and this new thing called Human Capital Initiative. Um, for the last few years, Springboard Plus has been a very, very successful uh, program. And it's been out there supporting uh, individuals either in full or in part to do programs from certificate, degree, postgraduate, master's programs, leading to qualifications primarily in the areas where there is you know, significant opportunity. Um, Springboard Plus and obviously the Human Capital Initiative is co-funded by the Government of Ireland and the European uh, Social Fund as well. Again, it's been a hugely successful program over the last few years. Just to mention the Human Capital Initiative, it's a new initiative, and this is the first time you'll see it this year. And what you will see in a few minutes is you will see programs, um, and uh, you'll see programs, for example, that are uh, that are funded under Springboard, and you'll also see programs that are funded under the Human Capital Initiative. Um, so the, the interesting thing about the Human Capital Initiative, just to clarify it, is in the Human Capital Initiative, that funds programs that are primarily for graduates. So for example, people who've been involved, who already have a level eight qualification. And when we come to one or two programs later on, what we're going to be doing is you'll see specifically those ones are for people who have a level eight qualification already. Uh, the rationale behind it is to support graduates to effectively you know, increase the provision of uh, recruits or skills in those areas future-proof graduates, give them new skills in terms of emerging technologies, and also to focus on you know, new areas, whether it's data analytics, uh, transversal skills, all of these skills that, even if you look at the skills that we've all developed over the last few months, because everything is online. So that's what the Human Capital Initiative is. The application process is important, and I'm gonna hand you over to, to Anna in, in, in a minute or two. There's a two-part process to the application process. And, and it's really important when we look at the, the application process, there's first of all, what we would describe is in terms of funding. So getting the funding or the financial support to do a course. But secondly, there's the other part in terms of the academic entry. Okay, and they're both very, very important. First part in terms of funding is obviously the funding mechanism that's there where you can apply to Springboard, you can apply to under the Human Capital Initiative um, in terms of getting support and the key thing that you need to do is to look at the Springboard Courses website. They announced some of the eligibility criteria today. I don't think they've announced all of it, but what's really, really important in, in your particular case is really to look at looking at that Springboard course or springboardcourses.ie, and in all of your cases, looking at your eligibility, looking at are you eligible for the course? So that's the first thing. That relates specifically to funding. The second part then, is whether you have funding or not, if you want to access the program, it's what we would refer to as the academic entry requirement. So if you want to do a particular course, then it's important that you actually have the, the academic credentials to be able to do that. And what we'll see in a second is we will talk about this idea of this national framework, and we'll talk about this idea of different levels, because sometimes people get confused on those. So really, the two things that are really important is, is first of all, understand you know, funding and if, see if there's funding available for you. And secondly, what's really important is then to make sure that you can meet the academic requirement. Just to, you know, I suppose, be very, very clear, just because somebody has springboard approval does not necessarily mean that they can have academic entry into the, into the, into the course. And again, we'll, you know, we'll spend a good bit of time talking about that. Okay. So what I'm going to do at this stage, I'm going to hand over to Anne, and Anne is just going to give us a bit of an overview of the industry. Yeah, thank you. Just to on to the next slide there, Fimber. So just to give you a little bit of context, I suppose, a background to the, the Irish biopharma. We look at pharma, biopharma. We'll also look at medtech. And we will look at the food sector. So why why are we studying for these sectors? Why are we educating for these sectors? Um, is there jobs there really? Uh, so the, the answer to the question is yes. It's a very buoyant uh, sector within Ireland. Um, the top ten pharmaceutical companies are based here, uh, and that's no doubt due to a number of factors. And one being the skilled workforce that we have. Um, there's about 85 uh, bio biopharma pharma companies located here 
um, you would recognize some of the big names, of course, some, some of the, the people joining us tonight are maybe working in them, Pfizer, Alexion, Mylon, Mylon um, Allergan, the Botox plant in Westport is a huge employer in that town. So we really have a strong footprint globally and particularly in Europe, um, but globally with regard to the companies that have established here and they're growing. So there is uh, opportunities to, to, to work with them, to gain employment with them and to develop a career with them. Um, if you can go on to the next slide there, Grimmer. With regard to the medtech sector, some, sometimes it's a little bit, not necessarily left behind, but we know we're really well established in the pharma sector. So just with regard to the medtech sector, it is a huge employer in Ireland as well. There's about 450 companies based in, uh, medtech companies based in Ireland, and a significant number of them are indigenous, which means that they have Irish roots, they've established in Ireland. Um, so it's really nice to see homegrown uh, industries develop or homegrown organizations develop. There's about 40,000 employed at the sector. If we have anyone listening from Galway, you will know that the West is a real success story with regard to the medtech. About 45% of the country's um, medtech employees are based in the West. So a huge footprint. But then we have the other 55% that's gathered around the country and in Dublin and Cork as well. So it, it is spread, but it's a, a really significant employer in the West. Um, nine of the ten top companies again located here um, and the second largest employer of medtech professionals in Europe so a huge footprint again and that indigenous um, nature of it is nice to see homegrown established organizations thriving based on the skill set thanks Finber. this is just some of the um, I won't go into too much detail but maybe if you're working in some of these companies you'll recognize your logo but we have strong links with many companies we place a lot of graduates um, and in turn a lot of employees come on our program so it's, it's it's twofold really we do have strong links that we place graduates into a number of different type, types of roles from entry level right through to more senior positions but in turn it's nice to see that th those employees are coming to us and going to our academic um academic programs and, and right up to master's level. We also train, so we do specialized training in some of these companies too. So we have a nice presence and a nice partnership with a lot of these global names. Thanks, Wilmer. A little bit about the food sector. So not to forget about the food sector, we do have um, a level six, a level eight, and a nine, a, a master's program for the food sector. Of course, we know Ireland is, um, is well established in food. We like our food, but we also have a, a lot of companies here. You'll see the big names, Kerry, um, Nestle, Cabri, Dairy Gold. There's 50,000 employed directly, um, huge exporter. And you can see the numbers there, 13 billion of exports. There's a lot of investment after, uh, with regard to Brexit, Brexit looming. So we, we're developing the skills there. There's a lot of uh, emphasis on that and developing our sector here. And also, um, just general, there's a skill shortage both in pharma, medtech, and food. So, it's a it's a it's a growing sector that we're we're looking to, that organisations are looking to invest and get skilled employees in. Thanks, Bimmer. So, I mentioned it at the start. You know, to give context, there's a lot out there. There's a, a lot of great names. We're well established. We have a really solid footprint with regard to the organisations that that have have based themselves here. But also looking forward, why do we need to train and develop additional workforce um, for, for these organizations, for these companies? Because there's a, there is a shortage, there is a future skills demand. Um, if you look, there's 130,000 employed in the sector, there's over 8,000 new jobs predicted by 2020, 4,000 now, and 23,000 up to 2025. And it's one of the areas throughout this COVID. Um, I suppose this COVID pandemic that we've had and the time that we've had over the last three months, it is the one sector that has continued to, to um, work and to operate um, and actually to hire uh, throughout it. So um, there is a skills demand and a shortage. So that's why we're looking to develop careers in it and develop the employees for it. Thanks, Bimber. For I continue on with this, Bimber, learner centered support. So we have, if you can go on to the next slide there. So we've mentioned that we, we and Finbar has mentioned that we do spend a lot of time with students. That That is one of the key areas that we 
we are proud of really. We have technical programs, they're scientific, they're technical, they're analytical. But in addition, we spend a lot of time from a, a student-centric approach. We, we have lecturers, obviously, we have mentors and coaches. So every class or every uh, um, program will be assigned a mentor. We spend a lot of time coaching and developing, working with your CV, understanding your skill set before you come into the course, understanding your skill set that you're gaining through the course. And not only that, the key thing is understanding how you apply that into an interview and how you can transfer it and communicate it within an interview. Because we all have great skills that we come, come to the table with, but then you're going to learn a lot on the program. And it's important to understand how to merge them and to be able to talk about them freely. Um, from an industry liaison perspective, I spend a lot of time, and we have industry liaison um, throughout the country, but spend a lot of time talking to companies, getting your CV in front of them, and really that they would understand the skill set that you gain from the program and how it's relevant, um, how you can hit the ground running, how you can understand the industry. So our goal is obviously education and our passion is education to really educate you and to build your confidence, but it's also to transfer that in that we get you to gain um, a, a high quality role and a fulfilling career to get you established in a fulfilling career that you can develop, you can grow, and that is secure. So that's just a little bit about the, the, the center, the centric approach that we have and developing you fully. Um, some, some notes on, on some of our graduates. Goodness um, was one of my students in, in the Dublin course. Um, she's now working in, she was in Griffos, but I think she's moved on to a more senior role as well. Uh, she's had a young child. It was great to be able to combine her time, uh, her study time she, with the online lectures and so on. So it's a, it's a great story that we have on YouTube. You can you can view that. Um, Bimbar, if you can go ahead there. Um, Lucas also, he came from a completely different industry or different sector. I think it was software. And then he's transferred into um, a medical device company. So really identify the skill set that he had before. And then through the program, he understood the regulations around med tech. He understood the industry he was going into, the compliance um, nature of it. And he could merge those two skills and move on to a new career. Um, so you do get a lot of confidence. His quote there is to say that he got a lot of confidence. But he got a, got a lot of confidence in areas that he didn't have that were core to moving into the new career in med tech. Uh, and the last one there, Laura also. So this is something that comes up quite a bit. I have no experience in the industry. I, I won't make the break in. I can't make the break in. Sure, it's not it, it's not easy. It takes work. Uh, it takes work to identify your skills. It takes persistence. Um, but at the same time, yes, it is possible to make the break, the break in. Laura was one of our students in Dublin. She's actually gone on to um, progress to a degree. Uh, she came from the equine, uh, which is like a, 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 a horse. Um, uh, can't think of the word, but it was the equine sector anyway. Um, so completely no knowledge of the pharma sector and then progressed rapidly. So at the end of the course, she had three job offers. She did a great job on her CV, really polished up her interview skills, and then we could um, move her into uh, employment with a really confident interview. Thanks, Fimber. Okay, so thanks, This Anne. is where Fimber will take over. Thanks, Emil. Thanks, Anne. Um, one or two questions that are coming in there. Obviously, if you have any questions, just type them in. There's a bunch of people in the back room there who are looking at them. Um, I saw one there from Amy asking, you know, if we don't get springboard funding, can I still do these courses? Absolutely. The key thing is always to meet the academic criteria. One or two questions on labs as well. When we get into the programs, that's probably a little bit of detail that, you know, if you want to contact us once we have schedules, we'll talk a bit more about that as well. So if you have any questions, just keep typing them in and uh, people will answer them for you. Just want to spend a few minutes talking about levels and credits, because if you haven't been involved in um, programs or courses for a while, sometimes people get, get confused a little bit. And we want to spend just two minutes talking about that. Um, you know, traditionally, when people did their leaving cert and they did certificates and higher certificates and diplomas and all of those things, it got a little bit confusing. So what they decided to do was they decided to create a framework, which is called a natural, nat national framework of qualifications. And effectively, what it does is it defines different levels. We mentioned it earlier on, you know, anywhere from a, a level one the whole way up to a, a level 10. 
And it's really, really important to figure out, you know, if you're doing a course, what kind of a level programming are you doing? Um, so the idea would be that if you're, for example, the the program that we might start off with you might be something like a higher certificate, which would be the equivalent of a, of a level six. Now, within those programs, within those levels, there's also a thing called credits. And credits is effectively how that course is actually made up. And I think it's really, really important that whatever course you're looking at, just make sure, one, you understand the level, and secondly, you understand the number of credits that are actually involved in that course. Because there are courses out there that are, um, you know, full degrees at level seven and they're at level eight, and there are courses out there that have a lesser amount of credits. And it's really, really important to understand that. So every course you look at, it'll it'll refer to a level, as in a level four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. And then the key thing is you look at the number of credits in there. So for example, if you were doing something like a, a full four-year degree, you know, started off in first year and did a full four-year degree, that would be the equivalent of 240 credits. Uh, most of the programs we're talking about, if you do a master's, it's 90 credits. If you do a postgraduate diploma or a one-year degree, typically that's 60 credits. But if it's underneath um, you know, 60 credits, if it's 20, 30 credits, for example, you just need to be a little bit careful um, that it may be referred to as a special purpose award. And the key thing there is really to look at when you want to progress into something else to make sure have you the sufficient number of credits. Sometimes people will come to us and say, I want to do a level eight, I already have a level seven. But in reality, it might be a level seven, but but it might only be five or 10 or 15 credits. OK, so really, really important to understand the difference between the two of those. The level is obviously the level in terms of whether it's a degree or a certificate or a master's. And the credits then is the number of credits associated with that. OK, so just keep an eye on both of those. It's important. From our perspective, we have a, a progression roadmap as well. And just to help you. We have courses that run at level six, level seven, level eight, level nine. A lot of these are springboard funded. Um, a lot of these are obviously, they're all available to anybody who wants to do them, um, irrespective of, of funding or not. So what you will see is the level six programs, for example, you'll see um, minor awards um, at level six. Then at level seven, you'll see full awards. Progressing on to level eight and level nine, you'll see full awards as well. So one of the things that we'll be doing is we'll be having a conversation with you to make sure that whatever course you're going into is the right course for you and also helps you in terms of your progression as well. That's important. So Anne is just going to give a quick overview of the programs, the locations, the start dates. And then what I'll do is I'll go into each one of them in more detail. So what we look at is you know, where we're going to run them, uh, when they're going to start. And then what I'll do is I give an overview of each one in terms of typically the modules in there and how it's going to is, be assessed and, and broadly uh, when they're going to run. Again, the important thing here is just get a sense by looking at these. When you contact us later on, and when you look at the last slide and you, you, do, uh, you contact us, we'll go into these with a lot more detail for you. Okay, so. Thank you, Fembar. Um, just to mention, there's a number of queries before I go on to this slide. There's a number of queries coming through about the Springboard um, website. So it, it, due to volume, there was issues with it, with it today. So it will be back up and running tomorrow. So just to address those queries, it'll be back in action tomorrow. So just um, from the Inner Pharma perspective and, and what we are running in September and also January uh, 21, we are a nationwide education provider, so we have a lot of uh, different centers, education centers. The level six, this one's in order from six right up to nine, so the different levels that Pimbar has spoken about. The level six in pharmaceutical and medical device operations, it's a minor awards, but 65, 70 credits, uh, and that will run in Dublin, Cork, and Limerick this September and also Waterford, Athlone, and Galway in January. Um, the six, the level six food, um, Food Science and Technology, also a minor award. Those two level six programs, you, ca you can combine them. So they're two separate entities, but you can also combine them and complete the two of them 
which would mean that you would end up with a full higher cert, which is a major award. So in effect, we have two minor awards and then put together, it's a major award, which would be classed as a full higher cert. So looking at the Food Science and Technology Programme, we're looking at Dublin, Cork and Limerick this September, and then Dublin and Waterford in January. The BA in Pharmaceutical Business Operations, Cork and Dublin in September. The BSc, again, another full award, and the BA is a full award. Um, BSc in Process Technology, Limerick and Dublin. Higher Diploma, uh, HDIP in Pharmaceutical and science and medical device technology that's the final year of a level eight it's classed as a hdip uh, and that would be in dub that plants in dublin cork and limerick in september and then we have our hdip again in food science and technology again a level eight cork and dublin and then two master's programs funded through springboard so this is the springboard mechanism um, and a master an msc in food business and technology again a full award dublin and online there's saturday classes and on, predominantly online and in september and then also the postgrad diploma in pharmaceutical business and technology. This that program, you have an opportunity to go on to get a full MSc at a later stage if you wish. So there is an option there to add, add on, and that's Cork and Dublin. So this is the Springboard funded programs, and then the next slide will show you the HCI funded programs, which Finbar has mentioned already. These are the ones um, tailored for graduates that you must have a level eight already to come on onto these programs and they tailor that, uh, that knowledge and expertise towards the pharmaceutical or medical device sector. So if you have an engineering qualification and you really want to develop for pharma, um, then you know the pharmaceutical business. If you have an engineering or science qualification, you really want to develop for med tech, then the PG in medical device technology. So uh, the key thing there is uh, the level eight uh, qualification entry requirement. So we're running the Pharma Business Dublin and Cork in September and the PG DIP in medical device technology Dublin and Limerick in September so that's the range we'll go into a little bit more detail it's a bit high level but you'll get an idea of the locations and where they'll be based thanks Umbar. key points just to, to I suppose reiterate the key points which is really important a summary of them the courses are delivered through um, a network of in a pharma education locations, which are nat national, and then we also have facilities. So we will use the pilot plant in TUD, and we'll use Griffith Colleges in Cork and Dublin, also with regard to the Saturday lectures. But you have evening online lectures, so a lot of flexibility during the week, and requirement then um, to either go to the classroom um, in InnoPharma. We'll use the pilot plant in, in TUD, and so on. So there's a kind of a series of venues which we'll go through. With, it, it's specific to what program you choose. Um, our lectures, uh, we get a lot of feedback on, on both the, the high level of um, industry experience and also significant academic experience. So we have really nice practical elements and then the academic part is hugely important too. Um, Part-time courses are delivered through flexible blended learning. This is the one thing that comes up a lot um, with our students that they love is that the, it's so flexible for them. If you're looking at working in pharma, medtech, and, and possibly food, you're looking at a shift environment, shift work. Big pharmaceutical companies don't close down at five o'clock, you know, billions of, or millions of pound, uh, euros invested in developing the site. They're not going to shut off at five o'clock. So um, it is a shift environment, and our programs are designed around that flexibility, that flexibility that you need. So the weekday evening lectures are delivered online. They are recorded. You can listen to them live. You can play them back. Um, so you, you don't really miss a class there, which is great. And um, the classroom based tutorials, one to two Saturdays per month. Uh, so that's where you're required to attend. And it's good to interact with your lecturers, your peers, your friends, your colleagues on the program. And you learn a lot from uh, your colleagues on the program as well. Um, the COVID restrictions have, have, have obviously impacted everybody. So the Saturday classes are online. But we do have a plan to return, return to classroom based when it's appropriate and we, when we can, because um, feedback again has been that those Saturday interactions are hugely important, particularly with technical programs and um, practical elements. It's a nice element to most of the pro or most a lot of the modules, but you will actually apply the theory. You might make a product, you might test a product in the lab. So there's a practical element and they can be held, held midweek. It's not a lot, it's approximately two, two per semester, which means that it's two approximately uh, six, uh, in six months, uh, which are required in midweek. Uh, we have a virtual learning platform. I'll talk very briefly about that. And um, you do get them to view within 48 hours. So it's, it's really flexible. 
and the feedback we have is it works very well particularly if you're working in that shift environment or family life you know that you, you can um, access the lectures after the lectures the recorded lectures after afterwards thanks Simbar. oh so this is actually just the other slide just to this the different platforms so we have the uh, the graphic on the on my left is showing the um the in class the at home the process the process labs the te the the practical element where you're looking at um we have our own process lab and analytical equipment and so on um, we have a GoToTraining uh, platform. We're using GoToWebinar uh, now, so it's similar to this. This is the environment that you'll be in for your recorded lectures. Um, Moodle, some of you might have heard of Moodle before. It's, the, it's where the repository where our, our learning system, where all your notes are kept, where you upload your files and so on. So it's a really efficient way of learning. Um, and the Inner Skills Academy, that is our e-learning platform. And we have recorded tutorials on that. Um, it's, you can view that separately at InnoSkills.com, but we have a lot of recorded um, modules that are very beneficial to support your learning. Um, so that's just a, a little bit about our virtual environment, but we also have the classroom environment. And over to you, Fimmer. You're on mute. Sorry, You're on guys. mute, Fimmer. Thank you. So yeah, so thanks, Anne. So what I'll do now is I'll just go through some of the programs in a, in a bit more detail. Um, just keeping an eye on some of the questions there as well. Um, I catch those questions as we go along, one or two generic questions as we go along. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll this slide will look similar for every program. Uh, these are all obviously the Springboard funded programs. And really what we want you to do is get a sense of one, obviously, the level, the number of modules. You can see there on, on, on down the side from kind of one to nine is the number of modules you'd be doing. Won't read through all of them, but you get a sense of what are the modules. So if, if this is a program in, in pharmaceutical and medical device, you can see there's programs in pharma, medical device, process technology, all of those things. Get a sense of what's in there. And also what we want you to do is just get a sense over here that what you'll see is, is how the thing is assessed. So this is what percentage of them are in exams. So if you see 50% here, it means that 50% of that module is assessed using an exam. And you can see at level six, there are lots of exams. As things start to progress up the levels, it tends to be more assignment based. Okay. And again, you can see the number of credits here. So I'm not going to go through each one of them as we go through every slide, but just as an observation as you go along, you might be looking for you know, basically how many exams do I think I might be having over the course of the entire program. And then what we have down here on the bottom is we're basically showing how many semesters, how many evenings per week, what's the location that we actually run it in as well, okay? So um, if we look at the, the level six pharma, you can see it runs over two semesters. Um, initially in September, it'll run Dublin, Cork and Limerick. And in January 21, it'll run in Waterford, Athlone and Galway. Two evenings per week, usually 6.30 to 9.30, two Saturdays per month, plus some practicals that Anne mentioned earlier on. And if you look at the roles, typically anybody going into that program, coming out the other end of it, going into maybe operator roles, technician roles, quality assurance, packaging operators, product builders, that would be a fairly typical uh, kind of a role. Um, so that's the, the level six uh, pharma program. Very similar program, but it's focused on food. So you can see here things like food microbiology, has up food regulations. That one runs over two semesters. Again, two evenings a week, 6.30 to 9.30. Two Saturdays a month. In September, we'll start in Dublin, Cork and Limerick. In January, then we'll start in Waterford, Athlone and Galway. Similar types of roles, but obviously in the food industry. Um, and as Anne early, mentioned earlier on, if you combined these two programs together, it would give you a full major award at level six. The level seven BSc. So this is a program that's geared for somebody wants to get into a slightly more technical area. Maybe they have some experience. Um, they're already coming with a level six qualification to get into this course. This runs over three semesters, uh, so slightly longer. Again, it's two evenings a week, two Saturdays per month plus some practicals that do run during the week. Again, there were some questions in the in the chat box there about the which evenings. Again, when we talk to you on an individual basis, we'll be able to give you a little bit more detail than that. 
plan initially is it'll run in Dublin and Limerick starting in, in September. And you can see the typical roles, again, within the pharmaceutical industry, a little bit more technical uh, than maybe somebody who wants to stay in an operator role or a support role. So you can see things like chemistry, analytical techniques, technical writing, for example, as well. Um, there is a question there around how long does three semesters take? It's a good question. Uh, Ronan is asking, typically a semester is actually about 15 weeks in total. Um, so three semesters, You normally a semester would start in towards the end of September with exams um, in the middle of January and then maybe early February up to May. And then the final semester in a lot of cases would be over the summer uh, with exams in August. Not every program runs over the summer, but typically a three semester program will run over the summer. So that's the level seven. Again, just observe on the on the right hand side, you know, the percentage in terms of exams, uh, CAs. You you do see here that there are exams. Every module is assessed. There are CAs, which is a continuous assessment, and in some cases practicals as well. So like Anne mentioned earlier on, you do have to find time and space to do these programs. You know, we are trying to put a lot into a um, an appropriate amount of time. Uh, so you do need to manage your time uh, well. The Level 8 Higher Diploma in Biopharmaceutical Medical Device Manufacturing, again, somebody who already has experience in manufacturing, that could be coming from pharma, it could be coming from semiconductor, it could be coming from medical device. Again, it's a more technical role. You can look at somebody wants to understand aseptic processes, utilities, pharmaceutical processes, uh, QRM is quality risk management, medical device. So you can see a lot of those modules are, are technical enough. So typically somebody coming with a level seven degree um, in science, engineering, you know, those areas. Runs over three semesters again, two evenings a week, two Saturdays per month, uh, some practicals, um, maybe four days across the entire program. Start off in Dublin, Cork and Limerick in September. One comment I saw earlier on, some people were asking, are some of these programs running in, in the January timeframe? You, typically, you can join these programs in the January, but the question may not be, there may not be springboard funding available. So, you know, you can join these programs, but, um, you know, what we're saying at the moment is there is springboard funding for these programs initially. Um, but, you know, do you want to comment? Just to mention on yeah, just to mention on that program as well, the level eight, it's it's worth noting that it, it's cross divisional really that you have the medical device sector in it, you also have biopharma and you have small molecule or, or chemical synthesis. So if if you're working in um API production and you're really interested in um bio biopharmaceutical processes and so on, this this program covers both, you know, so you can really apply one and the other, also you have medical device in there too. So it's nice to see the three different um, divisions are incorporated in one program. And then there's generic modules, you know, lean operations and aseptic and so on, just to mention that. Yeah, and jump in anytime. And um, again, just looking at some questions there, um, uh, what will the practical labs go ahead? Again, there's, there's some unknowns there in terms of given the COVID situation, how we're going to manage practicals. Our idea is to create in as close as possible, but in as safe as possible, what would normally be happening. Um, so to a certain extent, we are guided by government guidelines in terms of social distancing, et cetera, as well. Um, so, so that's the, the level eight. Let's have a look at uh, the next one. So the level seven BA, this is one that we run in conjunction with Griffith College. The previous ones we run in conjunction with TUD. Um, this is one for somebody who wants to stay maybe as a, an operator, uh, work in manufacturing, maybe work in one of the support areas, uh, maybe a business improvement role, could be a compliance role. Um, that one again runs over two semesters. Uh, so it runs from September to uh, January and then from February to May. It doesn't run over the summer. That's two evenings per week, two Saturdays per month. Uh, Saturdays, again, are in-class Saturdays, but given the current situation, they're being done online. Uh, they would start in September on in Dublin and Cork. And like I said earlier on, somebody technically could join in January, but currently we don't have springboard funding if somebody wanted to do that. But you could join if you funded it yourself. 
Um, again, you can see on the, the right-hand side the number of exams and the number of practicals, the number of CAs. You can see the roles there um, in terms of supervisory roles as well. One thing you might have noticed there on the right-hand side is it says subject to contribution in, in a few of them. Uh, again, the springboard criteria hasn't absolutely been defined yet. But traditionally, anybody who was doing a level six program who qualified for springboard funding, they were fully funded. Um, somebody doing a level seven, level eight, level nine, previously the criteria is that you would have to contribute 10% of the, the cost of the program. We're still waiting clarification. It may be there on the website at this stage, but that's something you, you just need to clarify um, as well. Uh, and that's obviously if somebody is, is in employment. Okay, the level eight. So the level eight BA, pharmaceutical business operations. And again, just to clarify here, this one comes under the HCI funding. This one is probably going to cause a certain amount of confusion or disappointment for anybody who's done our level seven BA. Um, because this one actually comes under the Human Capital Initiative. And if you remember what we said earlier on, the Human Capital Initiative, if you want to get funding for it, springboard funding, um, you must have a level eight qualification already. Um, absolutely, you can progress onto the course yourself if you're funding it yourself. But if you wanted to get uh, human capital funding, you would have to have a level eight already in some other area. They haven't been very specific yet in terms of what areas, if any, that you have to have that level eight in. Uh, but unfortunately, just to be clear for somebody, somebody who did our level seven BA and wanted to progress onto this um, and wanted to get springboard funding, if you don't have a level eight, you can't get springboard funding for it. Okay, so just to be clear about that one. Again, this one runs two evenings a week, uh, runs over two semesters, two Saturdays per month, runs in Dublin and runs in Cork as well, okay, starting in September. But again, you could join later on if you wanted to do that. Again, you'll start to see as we kind of go up the levels, the, the assignments start to change from now onwards, the exams, the weighting, et cetera, starts to change a little bit as well. Just to mention on the level eight as well, with regard to the HCI funding, that you may, um, you know, if you have a level eight in a non-cognate, so if you had one in business or um, in a different discipline, but you have the seven, there may be a, an opportunity to join once you have the level eight qualification. Um, so that's just to, to mention that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and as, as Anne is saying, that meets the financial contribution. But if you have a Let's say, for example, if you have a level eight in theology or in French, um, you might meet the springboard criteria, but unfortunately, you might not meet the academic entry requirement. Um, the requirement to get on the course would still be a level seven in science, engineering, etc. OK, so I know that probably sounds a little bit confusing, but like we said, there's two criteria. There is funding and then there is academic entry. The level nine postgraduate diploma in pharmaceutical business and technology. So there is funding for that. Um, if you wanted to progress on to do a full master's, you would have to fund that privately yourself. Springboard doesn't fund programs that move or are extended beyond a year's duration. So you can see there that um, all of a sudden things like the exams focus has changed is very much into assessment based, uh, continuous assessment based as opposed to written exams. Um, again, you're focusing at a, a slightly more strategic level. It's for people who already have experience or significant experience in an area. You must already obviously have a level eight degree, science, engineering, quality, medicine, or related area. That runs three semesters, so it runs over the summer. Runs two evenings a week, two Saturdays a month, and that will run in Cork and Dublin starting in September. Again, you could join in January. Uh, currently, we don't have any funding for anybody who wants to join in January, but you could join if you wanted to do that. You can see the roles, so more business operations, business development, clinical trials management, kind of more senior roles, more strategic roles, um, you know, planning roles, technology roles, uh, supervisory managerial roles as well. Again, subject to the same funding criteria that would be defined by Springboard. Um, the medical device, uh, again, is under human capital uh, funding. So this is a postgraduate diploma in medical device technology. So obviously it's geared for somebody who wants to work in the medical device sector or somebody who wants to work in pharma in a combination device sector. Maybe you're working in a pharmaceutical company 
and you're getting more involved in combination devices, et cetera, as well. So that one looks at emerging trends in medical device. It looks at things like operational excellence, uh, medical device design, medical device technology, quality systems associated with medical device. Again, if you look at the exams, very much heavily weighted around assignment based, some individual assignments, some group assignments. One's over three semesters, uh, two evenings a week again, two Saturdays per month in Cork and in Dublin starting in September. And again, you can see the roles there are more medical device related, but also, like I said, combination device related as well. So the important one, what do I do now? Um, what's really important? What's the next steps? So the next steps that's really, really important, okay, is apply to Springboard. Hopefully the website will be back up in the morning. Um, apply to Springboard. Because as soon as you get onto the Springboard uh, website, then we have sight of you. We have visibility on you. Again, places are limited. So, you know, do apply. Um, do apply as early as possible. Log on to springboardcourses.com. Um, there's a deadline for application for Level 6 programs is the 17th of July. And the deadline for all other programs is the 24th of July. Okay. Again, we haven't seen the absolute criteria here. Our assumption. Uh, is we probably have to give preference to people who are unemployed over somebody who's unemployed or implied. Again, we haven't seen that criteria yet. Uh, there will be probably criteria in terms of who are on uh, COVID supplements. Again, this, the, the Springboard website will, will probably clarify that. So that's the first thing you need to do. Okay? Once you do that, we will have visibility of your details. And then what we will do is we will contact you straight away. And then we will have those conversations with you to figure out what's the, the most appropriate course, how do we get all your details. The things we'll be looking for is your transcripts. So if you're applying for a level seven program or a level eight program, we'll be looking for your qualifications to say that you can meet the criteria. We'll be looking for you know other personal details as well, um, and we'll work our way through that process. So the most important thing, you know, Tonight or tomorrow morning um, is log on to springboardcourses.com. Um, and then once you do that, uh, we'll, we'll start those conversations with you. 